Cooking with Mickey. Today we're going to be making New England Pot Roast from the Liberty Tree Tavern in the Magic Kingdom. So let's get started. We're going to start off with our preheating our oven to 350 degrees. While that's preheating, we're going to go ahead and start browning our meat. Now I've got the oven set to 300, or the oven set to 350 and the stove set to medium. We're going to use a large pot and pour in fourth a cup of oil. We're going to brown the meat on all sides. We want to make sure we don't scorch it. While the meat's cooking, we're going to go ahead and start preparing our vegetables. So we're going to start off by largely dicing our vegetables. And we need two cups of celery, onions, and carrots. And what I did is I cut the celery right down the middle in half. And then I'm just chopping that. Make sure. Keep your fingers out of the way. And you don't place your finger on the top of your knife. I don't want to take a chance with a sharp knife of accidentally cutting yourself. Now, I don't know how many of you have been to the Liberty Tree Cavern. I, however, have not. On my upcoming trip in October, it'll be the first time that I will have tried it. And it's going to be one of the last times that they're going to have character dining. As of January 5th, 2009, they're getting rid of Mickey, Minnie, Pluto, and Goofy. Now until then, you can still go and see them in their Revolutionary War attire. And actually, that's the main reason we're going is to see the characters. The food is stuff like turkey, beans macaroni and cheese, a lot of stuff you can make at home. So we're going mainly for the characters. Now with carrots, I'm just going to chop them until it gets to the bigger part of the carrot. Kind of hard to dice the ends when they're so little. Always make sure your knives are sharp. If they're dull, you take more of a chance of accidentally cutting yourself. I would just split them right down, down the center. When browning, I also suggest that you make sure your skillet's already heated up. That way you don't end up just cooking it, it ends up having a nice brown on the outside, which will sear in all of the juices. That way you don't end up with dry meat. Okay, now that's nice and brown on all sides, we're going to go ahead and pull out our meat and set that aside. We're going to go ahead and add in one stick of butter and let that melt. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and finish chopping our onion. Now what I do is take off all the skin and then cut off the end that does not have the root. And then slice it from top to bottom. And then cut it across. That way it keeps the onion intact and it's easier to cut. You don't end up with all these little pieces that are loose. And if you have a large onion, it'll only be about half of the onion you're going to need. Now that our butter is melted, we're going to go ahead and add in our diced vegetables. We're also going to add in a fourth of a bulb of garlic that has been chopped. Now, if you're not real big on the flavor of garlic, the finer you chop it, the more flavor it has. So if you leave it chopped up in bigger pieces, you're going to have less of that garlic flavor. Now it also calls for two tablespoons of fresh thyme. However, all I could find was organic thyme, which I can't use. So if you cannot find fresh thyme, you can always substitute it for the dried thyme. Now, 
dried herbs actually have less flavor than the fresh, so I would probably add in extra of the dried thyme then. That way you'll get more of that flavor. Now we're going to stir these, and then we're just going to let them cook until they're tender. Now that our vegetables are nice and tender, we're going to go ahead and add in our flour. Now when I add in flour, I like to sift it in. That keeps it from being all lumpy so you don't end up with lumps in your, in your gravy or whatever it is you're adding flour to. And what we'll do is we'll mix in the flour. And then we're going to go ahead and let that brown. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and prepare our beef stock. Now it calls for six cups of beef stock. Now you can use, you can just go ahead and buy some at the grocery store that's already prepared. Or you could use bullion cubes. What I like is this stuff that's called Better Than Bullion. And all you do is you add one teaspoon for every cup. And you stir it in and let it dissolve. This I found has a lot better flavor than bullion cubes and, and the beef stock that comes in containers. Okay. And you just mix that till it all dissolves. I've heated the water up some just to have it dissolve faster. And then I just add in the water to it. And once I add this into the pot, then I'm going to go ahead and add in the other two cups of water since this only holds four cups. Okay, now that our flour has nice and brown, we're going to add in one cup of burgundy wine. Now you want to make sure it's not cooking wine, that it's wine you'd actually drink. If you wouldn't drink it, you don't want to cook with it. going to add in our six cups of beef broth. I'm going to have to get two more cups of water. Okay, we're going to stir this. And then we're going to add back in our beef. We're going to cover this, put it in the 350 degree oven, and let this bake for 40 minutes to an hour. It's been an hour, so we're going to go ahead and get out our pot roast. really smell the wine and vegetables. I'm going to take this out to let it cool a little bit before I cut that. Okay, so let's give this a try. Wow, it has a lot of flavor. You can really taste the wine and the thyme in it. It has a real good consistency for the gravy, which would be great to serve this with um, some mashed potatoes and some green beans. Um, if you're looking for something to drink with it, I would recommend something like a Shiraz. It has a nice fruity flavor. It would bring out the flavor and the meat a little bit more. Um, well, that's all for today. For this recipe and others, go to srsounds.com and check out the message boards. Till next time, I'm Kristen, this is Mickey, and we'll see you real soon.